Okay, I wanted to go over this example. Um, this is something we saw in class last week, and it very much relates to uh, what I asked you to analyze on Friday as, as a review, the review that you worked on together as a team. So I'm going to first begin uh, creating this first video just as a summary of what we talked about uh, in class, and then ask you to link what we talk about here in this example to the example that you did last Friday. And I think one of the things I want to focus on here is how to deal with gerunds. Now, if you remember, gerunds are verbs in the ING or verbs in the present participle that function not as verbs, but as nouns. And as we know, nouns and pronouns can be, they can function as subjects, they can function as direct objects, indirect objects, object complements, objects of the preposition, so on. So let's take a look at this question. Can you tell him to stop doing what he's doing? Again, this is a review. This is something we talked about um, last class. So uh, as we talk about this, also check your notes to update anything there that needs to be updated. Okay, so let's take a look here. We want to start with first the main clause. And we're going to start a little bit lower here so that we have some place to go. So we're going to start with the main clause, and I always recommend that you begin with the main clause. Okay, it becomes very difficult analyzing any kind of sentence if you're not able to first identify the main clause. All right, so in this case, can you tell him to stop doing what he's doing? So we're going to identify our subject and verb. Okay, so we have you as the personal pronoun functioning as a subject, and we have two verbs here, can, tell, and we identified can as a modal, and tell as our lexical verb, our main verb, okay, you can identify this uh, as uh, irregular uh, as well, it's a verb in the present, simple present. Okay, so what did you tell? All right, so first we can say we tell him, so I think we identify to him as a, the indirect object. Okay, we can also identify this as a prepositional phrase, to being the preposition, him being the object pronoun. Together we can identify this as the indirect object. So we have an indirect object here. We know that the direct object is going to go here in this space. And uh, we'll wait to identify or write DO because we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to analyze the rest of the sentence and we're going to need to utilize this space off to the right. All right, so we have here you can tell so we're going to rise this up because we're going to need to put to stop to stop. Okay, so we're going to identify to stop as the infinitive, and we actually have the infinitive phrase to stop doing what he's doing, all that together. So to stop what? Okay, so this is, we're going to need a line here to indicate that this is an object to the infinitive. Okay, just as we have a direct object to the main verb can tell, we're going to have an object to the infinitive to stop. In this case, the object is doing what he's doing. All right, doing what he's doing is the object of the infinitive to stop. So here we're going to raise this up. And if you remember, we have different symbols that we're using. And we're going to have a special symbol for gerunds. Check your notes on this. Make sure you have this in your notes. And when we have a gerund, we're going to simply write this symbol. And then the gerund, the verb in the ing, as as so. So remember, gerunds are verbs in the present participle functioning as a noun. We know that this is functioning as a noun because it's the object to the infinitive to stop. So here we're going to write our symbol doing. Now guess what? We have another object. Doing what? Just as we asked to stop what, we can ask doing what. In this case, doing what? doing what he's doing. Okay, so what he's doing now is the object of doing. Doing what he's doing is the object 
of to stop. And to stop doing what he's doing is the object of the verb can tell. So doing what? Doing what he's doing. Now in this case, we're going to put what as an expletive up here at the top. We're going to need a riser again. And now we're going to have a clause, he, doing what he, can you tell him to stop doing what he's doing? So he is doing. So now is doing is part of the verb phrase. It's in the present continuous. Is is the auxiliary verb. Doing is the action verb or the main verb or the lexical verb. Okay, many different labels that we can give it. Uh, he is a personal pronoun and so on. So here, okay, I'm not going to identify all of these because a lot of this has been, you know, we've, we've talked about this all semester. But infinitive, we have the two infinitive. Now, I would get in the habit of identifying this as a two infinitive when you have uh, the particle two. Uh, because later we will, uh, we may see some examples of some bare infinitives. Okay, so bare infinitives are going to function uh, a lot. Uh, they're going to function as nouns sometimes, adjectives, adverbs. Uh, we'll see some other examples, but for now, the infinitive is functioning as a noun. Specifically, all of this here now is going to be labeled as the direct object. But, as we've talked about now, we have objects within objects. So we have, again, doing what he's doing is the object of the infinitive to stop. What he's doing is the object of the gerund, object of the gerund, doing. And in this case, is doing, doing is part of the verb phrase, verb in the present continuous. All right, so... Uh, I, I want to bring this to your attention again. Uh, this is we, something we talked about last week, but uh, want to reinforce here how we diagram gerunds and where they are located. And notice that when we use the riser, everything is self-contained up above. Okay, so we're never going to have cases where we'll have any type of modifier. Okay, when I say modifier, I mean an adjective or an adverb under underneath this line to represent something that would be up here. Okay, so if you see any modifiers up that would modify either the infinitive or uh, the uh, personal pronoun, in this case he, then we need to bring up those modifiers up here where they are uh, relevant to the word that they're modifying, if that makes sense. Okay, so some of those, some of the, some of you who uh, completed the exam last Friday, I saw a few modifiers down here below when you had a riser, when maybe some of these modifiers, in fact, all would relate up to whatever it is that they're modifying closer there within the, the phrase or the clause or even the word that you're analyzing uh, in, in, uh, in the riser here in this case. All right, so uh, I hope this helps. Again, I want to provide this short video describing this example that we saw in class. I'm going to create another video talking about the examples that we saw last Friday where we're looking at gerunds, but now perhaps looking at gerunds functioning in different places. Because we know, since gerunds are functioning as nouns, that nouns can exist as subjects, sometimes they're direct objects, etc. Okay, so I hope this helps, and I'll, uh, we'll, let's look at the next example.